you know, Johnny wished he had that opportunity to say what color, or what size James was put was because he told me a text that Pastor gave him the wrong date. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so you in trouble some more, Pastor. <laughs> See that one up. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. We're gonna blame we're gonna Johnny blame the person that has my calendar. <laughs> so this morning we want to continue in the book of uh, Joel. And Pastor's by way of uh, blessings is that you know we come to the knowledge and truth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's, yes. That's the blessing that each and every one of us understand uh -huh. fully. Uh, what God has for each and every one of us for our lives. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Every head bowed and every eye closed as we go before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Father, we ask, my Lord, that you would continue to have your way upon each and every one of our lives. Lord, that you would bring, my God, illumination and revelation. God, as you, Father, move in this place in a special way, we Give you permission, Holy Spirit, to invade our lives, invade our heart, God. Mm -hmm. Father, my Lord, that we would all come to a, a sense of urgency of what you called us to do. Uh -huh. We ask right now, God, that you would give us a, a learner's heart, a learner's spirit. Father, my God, that we would internalize what you have for the church this morning. And Father, we, we ask right now, Lord, that you would just anoint me, God, to provide your service, Lord, that the Holy Spirit have its perfect way. We bind every distraction in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. and we ask, my God, that you would just take full control, full authority. We love you. We thank you. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Let's give the Lord another good praise, God. <laughs> We always have to understand that, once again, you know, in behalf of our pastors, uh, Pastor Ruben and Diane Kutran, we, we want to welcome everyone here yes. to our Sunday morning service and also via Facebook. If you're viewing us, we also welcome you as well because we are Riverside Peacemakers Ministry and we are the biggest little church in the yeah. yeah. We're not talking about attendance, we're talking about big in love. Hey. Yes. Giving, giving, right. And all that we do in our display yes. to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. And once and for all, we, we have to understand that it is our pastor's, uh, his objective is that each and every one of his members, his, his flock, that we would come to an awareness of what God called us to do, our purpose in Christ, Amen. and the spiritual gifts that he has given each and every one of us and how to utilize those gifts yes. that God has blessed us yeah. with. Amen. Amen. That's, that's the gift of the, yes. the love of the man of God. And so this morning, mm. we want to continue to look into the book of Joel. Uh -huh. So if you have your Bibles, iPad, uh, you know, go ahead and turn there to Joel. Uh, we're going to be concluding from last week's message where we talked about chapter 1 in the book of Joel. We're going to be going into chapter 2. And uh, Joel is a very small book, but a very powerful book and a very uh, uh, informatory book as to things that are going to occur. And the major theme of the book of Joel is that, number one, God does punish sin. Amen. We know that as the believers of Christ, that God punishes sin, but that he's also merciful. Mm. That God is also slow to anger. Uh -huh. That God is very compassionate. And that God always abounds in a steadfast love. That he's always about He never relents with this steadfast love that He gives you and I. Can somebody say amen? amen? That He's faithful, He's loyal, He's unwavering to the people of God. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. And if you walk away with anything this morning, uh -huh. walk away with this. That God loves each and every one of us unconditionally. Amen. You know, in the humanistic part of our relationships, you know, we love with conditions. Wow. You know, if we don't meet a certain expectation, maybe on that day, 
I mean, it's, it's not unconditional mm -hmm. uh -huh. that we expect certain things uh -huh. from individuals. But the only thing with God is that he just expects his our love in return. Can somebody uh -huh. say amen? Amen. That he loves us. Amen. And so with that, it also points the book of Joel. It's a reflection on our need to repent. And Joel is talking to the people about their need to repent in order to uh, not face further discipline okay. into their lives. Because we remember last week we talked about the discipline, how God used the locusts uh -huh. to yeah. come into their land yes, and yes. to you know, basically devour, devour all, the, all of their agriculture. Yes. You know, all their plants and, and greenery and trees and all that that occurred. And also in Hebrews in 12, we talked about how God disciplines those that he loves. Yes, sir. I'm going to agree with that, that God himself uh -huh. disciplines those that he loves. And yes, sir. Hebrews uh, chapter 12, and it's in the same way for the reason why he disciplines. Uh -huh. The same way he disciplines is the same way of, you know, fathers and mothers. How many fathers and mothers do we have in the house this yeah. morning? And so when our children are growing up, and maybe sometimes when they're 32, we still grab them by the ear. But when they're growing up, we, we, we find ourselves disciplining them for something that they did wrong or something that was going to cause harm to them. Can we remember those days? Amen. I mean, God probably doesn't discipline us in the way that maybe some of us disciplined our children, you know, because most of the time coming from the hood, you know, it's like we, we get our children like, like, Johnny, you know, I told you not to cross that street. Right. Right? <laughs> so, yeah. We lose yeah. control sometimes. Uh -huh. And we get anger, uh -huh. angry sometimes, yeah. and, you know, based out of frustration. So how do you know that, that we're so grateful that God doesn't get us that way? Uh -huh. So the bottom line is that, you know, we, we, we spanked our kids so that way they have a full understanding of the dangers that exist Amen. out there in the world. Amen? Okay. And it's the same uh, concept of how God himself disciplines you and I because out of love, uh -huh. if we're going down the wrong road, yes. see, God doesn't so much care about, you know, the circumstances we're facing, although he does. But when it comes to our soul, uh -huh. this is what he most importantly really goes after, that he is concerned of our soul and where we're destined to end up in. And so God himself would bring that correction in order for us to make a U-turn, because how many have ever made a U-turn going the wrong way, amen? And so in the book of Joel in chapter 2, the Bible reads, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in the ages to come. Before them, fire devours. Behind them a flame blazes. Before them the land is like the Garden of Eden. Behind them a desert waste. Nothing escapes them. They have the appearance of horses. They gallop along like cavalry, with a noise that like a chariot, and they leap over mountain tops like a crackling fire consuming stubble, like a mighty army drawn up for battle. At the sight of them nations are in anguish. Every face turns pale, they charge like warriors, they scale walls like soldiers, they march in line, not swerving from their course, they do not jostle each other like bump each other, each marches straight ahead. They plunge through the defenses without breaking ranks, they rush upon the city, they run along, along the walls, they climb into houses like thieves, they enter through the window. Before them the earth shakes and the heavens tremble, and the sun and moon darken, and the stars no longer shine. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. His forces are beyond number, and mighty is the army that obeys his command. The day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. And then he says, who can endure? Now, this is a letter just like I read, 
And right here just reading this, it's like, well, what is he talking about? Mm -hmm. what, what is he actually saying right here? Because mm -hmm. even in our time, even though we have the Bible, we might say, like, what kind of message is that? And so we hear the prophet Joel, mm -hmm. and he's using this as a springboard into the last days. And how many of you know what the last days are? Come on. Yeah. The last days is, is, you know, the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And here the prophet Joel, he says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Zion is, is Jerusalem. That's the holy city. And trumpets back then were used, you know, as a form of um, assembly. When you wanted to call an assembly together, blow the trumpet. Revelation talks about the blowing of the trumpets when, when a, a certain event is going to come forth. Uh, back in the wilderness when the children of Israel uh, were led into the desert, they would blow the trumpet when it was time to pack up their stuff again to get ready to move out. Come on, Pastor. And then also the trumpets were sounded as a form of a warning, a form of danger is approaching. In other words, here is Joel describing this trumpet being sounded because an army is coming their way. And so he's telling them basically, uh, get ready, uh, be prepared. And so when you look at the sound of alarm in the book of Joel, we talked about it. The book of Joel is, is dualistic. In other words, Joel is using the locust devastation, number one. He's using in chapter one what happened to their land. You know, they were familiar with this, that the locusts came in, and if you understand locusts, they, they basically would, would come in in waves. They, they, chew, they would chew the bark off of trees yeah, till it was bare. They would eat up all the grass. They would eat up all the fruit. Every, come on. Everything that, that could be eaten, the locusts yeah. would eat it. Yes, sir. Now, we're talking about millions of locusts. Because okay. the locusts would swarm, there would be millions of locusts that were, they would cover the sky. So the people here understood basically the devastation he was referring to. Okay. Now the dualistic part is, is he's saying, look it, there's going to be an army that's going to come in their future. Now that already occurred. That army he was speaking about, the Assyrian army who came in and captured them and took them into captivity. The, the northern uh, part of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, we look at this as because this is Judah that Joel is speaking to, the southern part. Okay. It's almost like, if you're from Casablanca, it's like there's a division here. They divided. It's like same Casablanca, but within Casablanca there was 1st Street and Evan Street. That's wow. the same thing that occurred here. Wow. 14th Street, Denton Street. Same east yeah. side, different yeah. parts that because they yes. stood up yeah. for whatever reason or another. And here comes the Assyrian army, and they take the northern part captured. Captured. Well, he's talking about that there's going to be a magnitude of human armies that are going to come and take you captive because of the fact that, you know, you guys are in sin. Okay. You guys need to repent, right? A hundred years later, the Babylonian army came and took them captive. And then after that, we, if we know history, the Persian army came and annihilated them, and then after the Persian, it was the, the Greeks, okay. and then after the Greeks, it was the Roman Empire. These yes. are all countries that have came and took Israel into captive, because wow. nothing new happens under the sun. Okay. History does repeat itself. Yes. Things that occurred Amen. back then are going to occur even now, yes. Yes. because now he's talking to them, and he's warning them, not only about that future event where it already occurred, the army came and took them captive. Okay. But now he's talking about another future event that which it hasn't occurred yet. Another future event to which you and I are, are maybe going to be around or maybe we won't be around. And then that's the day of the Lord. That's the, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to where he's talking about an army, a humanistic army that is going to come down marching on Israel. He's saying that you can refer this in, in Ezekiel in chapter 38, because in our time there's going to be there's going to be a ten a ten country coalition that marches against Israel in the last days. Okay. Now in Ezekiel he talks about countries like Magog and countries like Cush and Put, Put and Gomer and, and to uh, to Maya. And, and, and he talks about uh, uh, Persia. And these countries right here, we can say to ourselves, well, what are some of these countries? Uh -huh. We never heard of that. But 
in, in, you know, in the studying of the Word of God, and in our modern day time, these are names that these countries have actually changed. And it's like, Ross is, is, is Russia, uh -huh. and, and Put is, is uh, Libya, and Kush is Ethiopia, okay. and Magog is all the countries that end with a stand, like Afghanistan. There's like about seven or eight of those countries. Come on, Pastor. Uh, Kyrgyzstan, and Kyrgyzstan, and those ones right there. And Persia is now former day uh, Iran. They changed their name back in 1935. And Nagomer is, is Germany. And all this coalition is going to march down on Israel in the last days. And this is what Joel is referring to right here when he's telling them. And now he's using the locust swarm as an example about another locust swarm that's going to take place in the last days. And we can read about that in Revelation chapter 9. I don't have time to like go over all of this, uh -huh. but in Revelation chapter 9, there's going to be a releasing of locusts from the bottom of his feet that are going to come, come in on, the last days, and they're going to torment the humans on earth for a period of five months. These are in the last days, mind you. We're not going to be here because we all get taken by the rapture, and they're going to get have the authority to torment and sting because they're going to have tails like scorpions. Faces wow. like human, teeth like lions, wow. and faces like a horse. And this is where he's talking about that. They're able to scale mountains like an army, jump over walls, those type of things. And, and they're able to sting everyone who doesn't have the mark. But the mark is not anyone that's going to be here. The mark is 144,000 Jews that God has already separated. Because if you're in the tribulation part, it, it's like we missed the rapture. Uh oh. But there is a way to get saved after that. And of course, you know, you got to get your head chopped off, deny the Antichrist, don't take the mark of the beast, and maybe we'll talk about all that in another time. But this is what he's he's explaining to them. And so now they're 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 maybe tripping on it, or maybe they're they're able to grasp a little bit of it. Okay. Like we are right now because we know what the locusts did, and now in the future we know that there is going to be an army and a locust wow. that will be headed our way. And then because in verse uh, 20, he says, I will drive the Norman army far from you, pushing it into a part of very land, its eastern ranks, and, and drowned in the Dead Sea, and its western ranks in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea, and the stench will go up and smell will rise. Well, in between, in between these two seas, is the Valley of Armageddon. This is where the last final war takes place. This is Joel prophesying here. And the stench is going to be all the, the human bodies that the Lord you know, comes down and, and, and annihilates. It's going to be so much carnage, so much bodies that he's going to have all the birds and the, and the, and, and the whole world coming and feast on this, on this supper right here. Yes, sir. So this is the last days that he's talking about. And so what I want to talk to you about is that uh, I said all this to say this because I want to make it relevant to what it is that Joel wants to speak not only to them but also to us. And in verse 5 in Joel chapter 1, if you remember, he says, Wake up, you drunkards, okay. and weep and wail from all of your drinking of wine because of the sweet wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. And so he gives great advice right here. He's really talking about the people's spiritual condition. And this morning, he wants to talk to us about our spiritual condition. Because how I many of you know that sometimes we can find ourselves maybe walking afar off? Sometimes because of life stresses or certain things, sometimes we, we don't have, you know, the, the energy or the, or the strength or, or the, the desire sometimes to want to continue, you know, in the in the service of, of the Lord. And, and on, he's Pastor. talking to them, and he's basically yeah. talking to a people here that are sleepwalking through life. Come on. Come on, Come on Pastor. He's Come on, Pastor. He's talking about a people yes. that are asleep like this morning when, you know, at 6 o'clock when most of us were asleep and that pillow monster had us all gripped up. <laughs> he's not talking to a people that were snoring. He's not talking to a people that were comfortable in their beds. He's talking to a people a that were following the business as usual, the, the, the spiritual blindness, the, the spiritual apathy. Come on, Pastor. The people that, that were living uh, for today and, and not have 
tomorrow uh, there's not going to bring no consequences. He's talking about a people right here that were just living, like Ricky Martin said in that song, The Mi Vida Loca. Uh -huh. That's what he's Come talking about. You know that song? He's actually yeah. talking to a woman. He's saying in that song that this woman has introduced me to new sensations. He says this woman uh, every day introduces me to, into a new addiction. He says she takes my money. He says she takes my heart. He says she causes me to fall. It's like if she gave me a, 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 a sleeping pill. Uh -oh. And that's what the enemy wants to do. That's what Come on. Steve does. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. So we, we become yeah. desensitized to the movement of God, yeah. desensitized to what the world has to offer. We're, we're, we're like that Taco Bell commercial. Same time, same place, same food, same menu. It could be the same habits, uh, the same way. Get out of our house. The same things we do, same Woo. arguments, same problems, same everything that we face because we are taking that spiritual uh, uh, sleeping pill and the devil is singing us a lullaby and he's lulling us to sleep. And somebody say, we got to watch out. We got to watch out. Come on, Pastor. We chased after the fasting. Yeah. We chased after the good yeah. things. We chased after those things that made us feel good. Yes, sir. Yeah. But I want to let you know that that road or that sin, it'll take us to places that where we will no longer want to be. It'll take us into roads that we will no longer want to travel in. Come it'll on. put us on misery road. It'll mm -hmm. put us on shameful way. It'll put us on that on that disease uh, uh, court. Come on. It'll put us on that apathy lane. It'll take us to places that where we My God. think to ourselves like, man, how did I end up here? Uh oh, you're yeah. preaching down. Many of us can attest to that. We yes. have testimony yes. Come on. of living in that bottomless pit. Yeah. Coming Come on. digging our way out of that hell hole right there. Uh -oh. And the only way we can describe our way out of it is glory be to God. Hey!
In other words, we got to repent. In other words, behind this shirt, I mean, you might find some tattoos. Behind this shirt, there's a, a significance there as far as a gang relations, okay. prison relations, okay. things that, that tattoos that say, oh, you're about the business. But inside, yes. inside the heart, okay. that's not displaying the interchange that you come out of that life. Woo! Because the Bible says that in order for us to attain the kingdom of God, we must be born again. Right. And to be born right. again of, of, of water and of spirit. Amen. And to be born again is that that, that inward transforma uh, transformation has to take place. Uh -huh. The Bible in Proverbs says, as a dog returns to his vomit, Woo! a soul that was washed goes back to washing in the mud. In other words, a soul is a baby pig. In other words, on the outside, you can wash a pig. On the outside, a pig can look clean. On the outside, a pig can, can have manners. On the outside, a pig can be your pet. But oh, once that pig sees that mud, his nature, the nature is going gonna, is gonna to pop out and he's going to go back to diving into that mud just like a, a dog returns back to his vomit. Wow. We're talking about a dog, right? We yeah. know a dog vomits, yeah. and then he goes back, right? The thing about that is on the outward part, okay. the outward reformation is that sometimes we might get tired and we'll put something away. Uh -huh. I don't want to do this no more. Sometimes we'll get off that computer, right? We stop looking at pornography, right? We stop going and getting high, right? Mm -hmm. We stop going to the bars. We stop going to the nightclub. Hey! Right? Because we're tired. Come on, Pastor. But just like a dog returns back to the vomit, if there's not an inward transformation, hey! you can go back yes, sir. and that mud, and then that's when the devil begins to have his way upon you, and then we're asking the Lord, Lord, where are you in my situation? Yes. That's not going to occur. He says, we got to repent. We got to pray. We got to fast in order for these things to occur. Yes. What things must occur? See, because repentance is not something that we do where, where we cry for the moment. Because I don't give at that. I mean, I've, I've, I mean, I've had all those types of experiences. You know, trying to pacify my wife. Trying to act like I, I've actually changed. <laughs> you know, we can shed some tears. Oh. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in, in Corinthians 7.10, it says that uh, for godly sorrow leads to salvation. Wow. Right? Or for godly sorrow leads to repentance, uh -huh. which brings salvation and leaves no regret. Woo. In other words, godly sorrow. In other words, this is where, man, you had an experience with God Almighty. This is a place where, as a matter of fact, you said, you know what, I actually want you to come into my heart and clean up shop. As a matter of fact, there's no more games. As a matter of fact, we take off that total mask and we let the world know who we are. And that means we not have, might not have it all together right now, but you know what? We're pressing forward. Hey. We're going forward. Yes. We're dealing with the things that we need to deal with yes, sir. on the inside. It's not something we're doing just to pacify for the moment. Mm -hmm. right? And that leads to salvation. In other words, we will continue to remain in the grace and the mercy of the Father because sometimes that can be gone. Yes. See, that's yes. why the army came down on them. Uh -huh. You know, where was God in that situation? Well, it's because if you didn't want to repent. And repentance is not the shedding of tears. Uh -oh. Repentance is changing the mind. Yes. You gotta change the mind. Come on, Pastor. Yes. Come on, Pastor. We change the behavior, we change the lifestyle. That's been the blessing of the Lord. Yes, sir. You go, you go in your life. Changing that. And I want to let you know that if we begin to change these things, yes, sir. the environment part, your kids are going to be in that. Yes, sir. Your friends are going to be in that blessing. All that you love are going to be in that blessing. Why? Because we took a stand yes, to serve God Almighty on, with then. all our hearts, with all our hearts. us, but it's not just only about us. we got to come out of that selfish nature. Yes. The selfish nature is that I want to do what I want to do at the instant gratification because it's like, a, you know, it's calming me, right? i got to go through that. But we got to buckle down. 
people of God. Yes, sir. Buckle down yes, and hold do. tight and give our hearts over unto the Lord. Yes. You see, because God was basically telling the Judah, the southern kingdom of Judah, he says, look it, I love you. He says, I love you. Return to me with all your heart and I will return to you because yes. I love you. There's many people in the world and, and you know different relationships that we've heard it before, that word, I love you. But we say I love you unconditionally, but no, that love comes with condition. We say I love you until death do me part, but I'm going to let you know there's a lot of people divorced and that dude's still alive. Or she's still alive. Where's the death do you part in that? See, men will fail you, people will fail you, but God will never fail you. Hey! I love you. Uh -huh. I love you yeah. in your condition. I love you when CPS was took and taking your children. Yeah. I love you when you were slain. My God, my family. God. I love oh. you when you were full of misery. I love you when you were yeah. a broken house. Woo. I love you when you were in pain because your children were out there lost and bound. I'm the one that loved you. Yeah. Return to me. Hey. And that's all the Lord wants from you and I. Yeah. And then when he says, when you rend your heart, he goes on and he says, I will restore unto you everything that the locusts have eaten. Oh, yeah. Now this can be referred to time. We cannot restore time. We cannot go back and, and do certain things or undo certain things that have occurred. Because, My God. You know, that the enemy has robbed us of our time. Uh -huh. Some of us, if we can wish that we can go back and get that time back. Take me back to the 30s with this type of wisdom. Can you imagine the, the power we would be, the strength wow. we would have? Woo but a lot of that was squandered. It was spent foolishly on, on our desires. Time, but see, I will restore that unto you. I'll restore it whether it will be with your children. I'll restore it with your grandchildren. I'll restore it with the people of God. I'll restore it with the blessings I'm going to give you at your job. I'll restore it with, with, with the world. I'll restore everything because I am the God that healed thee. I'm the God that called thee by name. I'm the God that is the angel of people for the foundation of the world and we gotta trust God. Yes. We yes. gotta trust God because it's only in God's perfect timing because we can say, well, when is it happening, right? When is it coming my way? I'm still waiting, right? Yes. But God is talking here about, about the end times, things that are going to occur. And so with that, now, once, once the repentance comes, we see that here is Joel. And he says, and afterwards, after what? After, rend your heart, after, return unto me. Uh -huh. He says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit. Mm -hmm. And then this is, you know, it, and, uh, it was fulfilled in, in Peter's time in Acts chapter 2. He says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a glowing of, of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house that they were sitting in. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them, the Bible says, were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to. And then, in, the, in verse 13 it says, But some, however, made fun of them, saying that they had too much wine, that they were intoxicated. Uh -huh. You see, this is very important right here. This passage right here. You know, because the Spirit of God is, is given to each and every one of us here. Right. Amen. And here, right here in, in Joel's prophecy in the book of Acts where it's being fulfilled, uh -huh. this is where God comes. And at first they heard a violent wind. And then wind signifies the Holy Spirit. Okay. And then also they they saw what, what appears like tongues of fire. Yeah. And that those tongues of fire separated and went to rest on each one individually. Wow. And then after that, they were indwelled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. And then they began to speak in other tongues. Amen. So that paints a picture of a transition that is taking place. Okay. Because in the Old Testament times, there was nobody that was ever indwelled with the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. In the Old Testament times, they would go to the priest for, for the spiritual uh, health that they needed or the okay. spiritual condition. 
But here, right here, this transition, he says, I, I, I'm going to pour my spirit on all flesh. Amen. Not just for the men. Uh -huh. I'm going to pour my spirit also on the women. Yes. I'm going to pour out my spirit on the old. Not, yes. not, uh, not only on the old, but also the young. Yes. Not, not only just the wives. Uh, I'm going to give my spirit not only to the free men, but also to the slaves. Yes. And that transition Amen. right there, the outpouring of the spirit is, we call that the, the priesthood of believers. Sally kind of mentioned it a little bit. And the priesthood of, of believers is that here we are, that once each and every one of us have received the Holy Spirit, that we're now empowered as an individual, each and every one of us is held accountable for our own actions. Amen. Each and every one of us have the responsibility uh -huh. to make sure that our loyalty remains intact with the Lord. Yeah. That our spiritual health is intact. That our spiritual condition like that. is upright with the Lord. Come on, Pastor. It's our responsibility to seek God. It's our responsibility right. to pray. Hey. It's our responsibility to read the Word. It's our responsibility to have our devotion right. and worship. We don't need to wait to come on Sunday. It's not Pastor's job to, to, to try to you know get the whole church to, to be fired up for the Lord. But it's each and every one of our responsibility. Yes, sir. For ourselves, but the condition also of the church. Uh -huh. Each one has a part, and we can read about this in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse, and verse 12 about how God has called each and every one of us to edify the church, hey. to build the church, uh. and to utilize our gifts. Because okay. we know that God has given us gifts. Amen. Yes. He's given us gifts. So we got, we got things right here uh -huh. that we can follow, patterns that we can follow. Number one is that the Lord, He brings that correction. He brings the discipline. You know, without that discipline, some of us might not be here today. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've been disciplined by the Lord, and I, I can't tell you how much. Or you might see, oh, you know, uh, Pastor Frank right now, because Pastor Frank had an experience. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of times where I, I, I caused a lot of pain to my wife. My God. I'm talking about while well, serving the Lord. Uh-oh. I'm talking about, you know, coming that, that, that outward tearing of the garments, you know, uh, uh, appearing to have, you know, that, that godly appearance. Wow. But inside, just Come like on. Jesus told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, inside you're like dead man bones. You're, you're like those whitewashed scepters. Woo. Outside you look good, but inside you're rotten. Inside, you're foul. Wow. Inside, you're nasty. My God. Inside, that anger's control. Come on, preacher. That jealousy's control. Yeah. Inside, that lust has been captivated. Inside, wow. everything about the world is drawing you away from me. Woo. And when we have that experience right there, he says to you and I that all we to do is just to turn our hearts to him. Rend our hearts to him. Right. Not the outward. Not for anybody else but for an individual relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do that, this is where he says that I will restore. I will restore everything that the locusts have needed. My God. The kangaroo, yeah. the, the chewing locusts. Come on, Pastor. The crawling locusts. I will give that all back to you. But even if all that, because how many of you know that material things don't really matter? We talking about the inside of an individual. What do you know? It's hard to control that anger sometimes. Yeah. It's hard not to, not to like, man, actually like gay people. I mean, you really think about it. You know, it's hard, you know, with the world and all the sensualities and sexualities. It's hard to, to at sometimes walk a, an upright road, right? A, an upright walk. Yes. I mean, but when we look at it, uh -huh. you know, the, 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 the unforgiveness in our heart, maybe. Because that's ugliness, too. The jealousy, that's ugliness too. Wow. The anger, that's ugliness too. Yeah. You know, the violence in here, that's ugliness yeah. too. Here, when we think it, we actually commit it. Uh -huh. The Bible gives us reference to that. We think it, no, you've done it. Wow. According to the standards of the Lord. Yes. Well, how do we get rid of all that, right? Yeah, we say die to ourselves. But that's easier said than done. Yes, sir. But the way that we do that, right? Because Pastor was talking about revival. And I'll be closing Revival always took place when the, 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 the people of God found themselves in dire straits. When they found themselves in captivity. When they found themselves in the verge of death. 
And I want to let you know, when the Bible says to die, it's unto ourselves. How I many you know that a dead man, if we like ready to die, if we got shot and you're thinking about your last moment, when people are going to die, they say that the first word they call out to is God. They say God, right? Because nothing else matters at that time except God. And then if they have time to think about it, then we start thinking about our loved ones. We start thinking about, you know, like, oh, I'm going to miss my wife. Or what about my, my grandson? Or, or wait a minute, Lord, don't take me yet because I still got a, a job to do. Uh, they're wow. still going to need me. We, we focus on what wow. really matters in life, which is God, family, and then the church and friends that we have. That is what is important in life. So when we say die to ourselves, we have that attitude, like I'm a dying dead man, right? And we, think, so we don't think about, oh, that, that person still owes me $200. <laughs> that, that, that destroys relationships when people owe you money, right? Yes. You look at them sideways now. You, you don't talk to them no more, right? This is why families don't talk, because of maybe money issues. Yes. Or you're angry about something. Or they did something. But I'm going to let you know that in a situation to where trouble will alter your focus, we don't be thinking about that stuff. We don't be thinking about life stress. We don't think about bills. We don't think about whoever done us wrong. So are we, God's people, just like the people mock them, come under the influence of the living God, Jehovah Jireh, Jireh, God Almighty, we come under the influence. And I'm going to let you know that under the influence, right? How many ever had that uncle that used to give you money when he was under the influence? <laughs> right? People start giving things away, right? I used to go around my grandma when he was drunk. He used to give me money all the time. My stepfather used to give me money all the time. But when we are under the influence, we're willing to give. Wow. And when we're under the influence, we're willing to give. Wow. Not only of our money, we're willing to give of our time. We're willing to give of our action. We're willing to give of our display. And the Lord is saying, look it. Repent unto me, right? Repent of your hearts unto me. Yes. Let me fill you with the Holy Ghost. Yes. I'm going to let you know you're going to be intoxicated. And I'm going to let you know this is what you're going to give back unto me. This is where your, your prayer life will be enhanced. Yes. This is where your worship will be enhanced. This is where your giving life will be enhanced. And then this is where we begin as God people begin to operate in one mind, one accord, yeah. one faith, one baptism, one fire. Can somebody yeah. say amen? Amen. 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 So with that, all the Lord is asking of you and I is that we just give him our loyalty. Amen. That's it, loyalty. Give God his loyalty. Mm. Each and every one of us as the priesthood of believers have that responsibility. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. There might be times that we will talk about the last days because how I many you know the last days are important? Yes, they are. You know that we are actually living in the last days. Yes, sir. You know, we mentioned, you know, like Russia, and I am going to close for real. <laughs> you mentioned like Russia, you know, if you look, this is, you know, the, the, the spiritual apathy. If you look at the news, you, you, you see what countries are, are like trying to bully their way right. in, pre in preparation of, of certain things. We're in the end times. Yeah. Most things are, are knocking at our door. And the thing about it is that don't let them catch us slipping, amen? Yeah, you will not be asleep. Because it'll be like the twinkling of the eye and everybody's going to be gone and, you know, Catholic said it best, there'll be some that are making things happen. Some are sitting there wondering what happened. And <laughs> uh, we don't want to be wondering what happened when that time comes. And I know I assassinated that boat right there. <laughs> every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Father, only you know the heart of your people, God. Yes. We have an understanding that you do love us unconditionally. And Father, sometimes our situation and our circumstance, God, that we may find ourselves in, Father, is initiated, God, by our decisions and our choices. We ask now, God, that you would give us the wisdom, Father, that we need, God. Father, to apply your principles into our lives that, Lord, that we have the capacity to just turn the other way, God, and to walk according to your standards, Lord. We pray right now, God, that you, Father, would continue to strengthen us as a church, 
empower us as you have. And Father, my God, we, your people, my God, make a commitment here this afternoon to serve you, God, with all of our hearts. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would guide us and counsel us in areas that need to be refined, Lord. Father, that we would please you in all that we do. We thank you. We love you.